Although I've heard positive things about fruit, Brian Clement from the Hippocrates Health Institute says fruit is picked unripe and has been hybridized to be much sweeter than it originally was in nature and that it acts like any other sugar in our body and should be limited in consumption to just one or two pieces if we're healthy and zero if we have a health issue. Do you agree? Well, I certainly agree that our fruit has been hybridized, not just fruit, but vegetables too, have been hybridized. Uh, I looked, in fact, once at how many of our common foods have been hybridized, 2,200 common foods. That's pretty much all of it. So yes, they have been, and picked unripe, certainly a lot of fruit is picked unripe. I mean, bananas are picked unripe in Colombia and then gassed on the boat to America to try and ripen them up. Now, as far as the action of the sugar, there are some differences between fruit and eating, say, a high fructose corn syrup drink. And one of the differences is, of course, that fruit has a lot of antioxidants that are very valuable, whereas the drink may not have those. Another thing is that it is absorbed slower when you eat whole fruit. Now, fruit juice absorbs very quickly, just like a sugar, and dried fruit does too. But whole fruit absorbs more slowly because the sugar is complexed in and takes a while both to eat and takes a while to digest. So the key is to have our blood sugar at a stable, good level and not shoot up too fast, too high. That's called a sugar rush and it's a lot of fun, but it's bad for us. So another thing that's interesting is a recent study came out showing that both apples and strawberries slowed the absorption of other sugars in the bloodstream. The polyphenols, these wonderful plant chemicals, slowed the absorption of sugar. So they were testing people taking a sugary drink along with either strawberries or apples, and they found that the absorption was slower. So there are some real differences. Now the key here is glycemic load, not glycemic index, but glycemic load. If it's under 10 with a fruit, such as watermelons, peaches, pears, any of the berries, they're all under 10 in glycemic load, which means they do not raise blood sugar unduly or quickly. So these have I consider safe even for diabetics. Now it's a shame that most doctors say eat no fruit if you're diabetic because the damage to the arteries, the eyes, the kidneys, and the brain in diabetes from this excess blood sugar is mediated through a lack of antioxidants. And this fruit is loaded, especially the berries with antioxidants. Vitamin C, lycopene, um, yeah. Zeaxanthin, Lots of antioxidants. All kinds. Pretty much all of them. <laughs> Another thing I wanna point out is that uh, illness takes many forms, and if someone has constipation, well, then the smooth, gentle fiber of bananas is very helpful. Another thing, if someone has migraines from drinking Pepsi Cola all day, like my girlfriend, she could benefit from having some fruit instead of the Pepsi Cola or whatever beverage, you know, caffeinated beverage that she's choosing. It will give her protective antioxidants, it'll give her high fiber, and it'll be delicious and juicy, and satisfy the needs. So it depends on the illness. Uh, some benefit from more fruit and others. Uh, we heard Brian Clemens talk and he's brilliant about, uh, he was talking about cancer and sugars and I learned something from him. And so yes, with cancer, that may be a real issue. And they are brilliant with their vegetable juices. I have no qualms about that. I'm really impressed. But because cancer thrives with high blood sugar, doesn't mean that you can't eat fruit because these low glycemic load fruits do not raise your blood sugar. Now, mangoes and bananas are medium glycemic load and people should be careful if they have cancer or diabetes not to eat these. But berries are always safe. In fact, in our trial, we used one cup of blueberries, strawberries, or red grapes every single day as part of the reason why people got a lot better rather than worse in their memory and thinking abilities. Which fats and oils do we want to avoid <laughs> and which do we want to consume and what's the basis for your opinion? <laughs> well, I wrote a textbook, uh, another one called Fats and Oils Demystified. And in this, I explain chapter by chapter what the fatty acids are, what the triglycerides are, what cholesterol is, and how these fats occur in foods and how they're refined out of foods. So I do use that as, as my source uh, because it's based on good science, excellent peer-reviewed scientific literature. I feel there's a lot of misinformation about this. Humans require only two essential fatty acids. 
linoleic acid is an omega-6, which we require, but everyone seems to get too much. So for a linoleic acid, the omega-6, it would be better if we ate a little less, not more, even though it's an essential fatty acid. Omega-3 fatty acid from plants is alpha-linolenic acid, and this one is low in most diets. I analyze diets with my diet doctor, Safra, constantly, and I see that this is often low. That's why I recommend the flaxseed powder, because that keeps your omega-3s at a reasonable level. So these are the only two fatty acids that humans need. Do we need saturated fat? No. Humans do not require it. We manufacture that in our livers. We manufacture palmitic acid and just enough to do what we need, but not extra, hopefully, unless we're eating too many saturated fats. Do we need long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids like DHA, which is docosahexanoic acid, or EPA, which is eicosapentaenoic acid? No, we really don't. We just like vitamin D, which we make in our bodies, we also make these in our bodies. Now there's a whole chapter in my book, Fats and Oils Demystified, that talks about how we make this EPA from the plant-based omega-3s. And it's true, we do need some other nutrients in order to make this happen. But it is certainly possible to make it happen. So what else is there to know? We need two essential fatty acids. We do not need any other fat in our diet except for extra calories, which a lot of Americans would do better without. Here's a picture of his, there are several books that Steve wrote. It's almost scary. Here we have <laughs> the fats and oils demystified. There's an avocado, olives, a variety of nuts and seeds. And I don't know what's over there, but. Indicating that we should get all of our fats and oils from whole intact foods like nuts and seeds, avocados, and olives rather than refined oils. Which fat soluble nutrients are essential and which are desirable? Oh, that's a great question. The fat soluble nutrients are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. These are the th fat soluble nutrients. Now carotenoids are also fat soluble nutrients and many of the polyphenols are fat soluble too, such as, uh, well, the uh, curcuminoids from turmeric, they are fat soluble too. But it is difficult to absorb these nutrients, and sometimes people don't get enough. As I mentioned, vitamin E is lacking in the American diet. Now, some people are eating very low-fat diets, such as 10% of their calories is fat or less. It's very difficult to stay on because it's hard to be satisfied with this. But they're also not able to absorb the fat-soluble nutrients, such as vitamin E and the carotenoids, because they're not getting any fatty triggers to trigger digestion of these things. You have to trigger the bile. There's a hormone called cholecystokinin yep. that triggers the bile, and then the bile is able to mycelize the vitamin E so it can be absorbed. Basically, it surrounds it with water-soluble fragments so that the intestine can absorb it in. If this doesn't happen, then you simply don't absorb the amount of vitamin E or carotenoids that you're getting. So these are the fat-soluble nutrients. They are crucial for health and the brain. So simply put, to reiterate, you need some form of fat in a meal uh, that has fat soluble antioxidants in it, like green leafy vegetables. Your or creamy carotenoids. walnut dressing would work. Yes. So uh, even a few almonds will work. You don't need a lot, but you need enough to trigger that fat digestion. And of course, you need to actually be eating the vitamin E, for instance, before you can get it. And as we mentioned, vitamin D should be supplemented in most people.